What do I want to talk about? But now, uh, why is this so hard? I've always wanted to upload videos, but I just didn't have the courage to do so and I kind of hated my voice before, but I've come to accept it now so, yeah. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how I ended up here in Madrid, Spain Like why I came here, how I got here, what am I doing here, and all of that I really wanted to use my native language, which is... Um, but no, I can speak Visaya of course, I'm from Visaya and I don't know how to speak Tagalog but Filipinos understand English anyway so for the sake of my friends who won't be able to understand Filipino, I'll just be using English So let's first go back to my life as a university student I was just a normal student in the university with zero savings I don't even have a bank account in the Philippines yet I was studying bachelor or secondary education major in English at Xavier University at Inay de Cagayan so that's in Mindanao I was a scholar because I graduated valedictorian in high school and I got additional scholarship from, from a private company and that private company gave me allowance every end of the semester it wasn't that big but it was really helpful and I really wouldn't be able to study in that university if not for the scholarships that I have I got to know the program because of a friend and a classmate who is here with me now and we've been friends for I think 4 years or so and though we live like 2 hours away from each other because we're assigned in different schools It was during my last year in the university so I was doing my internship by the way, there are different ways to apply to this program, but the easiest way is with partner schools. You can check if your school is a partner with the Spanish Ministry of Education or not, but there are other ways. And I'll be talking about that in, in some other videos that I might be making in the future. So yeah, during that time, there were very few people who were interested. Like in the whole university, I think only 12 people applied for it. During the process, we had to sign papers about our information and then we had the preliminary interview with Ms. Inelio in the office of the vice president. I think everyone passed the interview and then after that, there was another interview for the visa application and then there's a lot more process until we got here. So we started the application last December 2018. Then. Uh, the interview was on January 2019. It was February 2019 when we did the interview with the Spanish Embassy in the Philippines. So what happened that time, I was doing my internship in Gagando National High School with 60 to 75 students per class, which is crazy. Private schools in the Philippines normally have 40 to 45 students while public schools would normally be 50 to 75 students so in the public high school I had grade 8 grade 8 is equivalent to second to so here I had my interview with the Spanish embassy with Miss Sandra that time at my friend's house because I didn't have my laptop like I was a really poor poor student I never had a laptop well until now I'm using the school's laptop because my mom won't buy me one not even a phone I always buy my own phone since university and I use the money for my scholarships well I'm super careless I keep losing things so my mom my sister want me to buy stuff but my sister gave me a phone when I graduated as my but I lost that after two months. Yeah, so that's the reason why they never wanted to buy me anything. So I had to buy my own stuff. Uh, going back, I did my interview with Mara, the friend who introduced the program to me, and the friend who's also with me here in Spain. Um, then we passed the interview. After passing the interview, I actually didn't tell anything to my family that time. Like, they literally didn't know that I was applying for that program because I didn't want to tell them. 
until I passed both interviews. So I started telling my sister about it and then my mom and they said, oh, it's such a great opportunity. Uh, the reason why I applied for the program, it wasn't really because, oh, it's Spain, like I want to go there. Not really that because I didn't know much about Spain that time. I joined the program because I don't know, I just wanted to leave the Philippines and start a new life in a place where nobody knows me. Yeah. Another reason why I applied for the program is because I didn't want to be a burden. Like if I don't get a job right after graduating, what will people think of me? Like, oh, she graduated with honors, this and that, but she's doing nothing. And I didn't want to hear any of those. I just wanted my mom to be happy and proud of me always. And yeah. After that, we had our graduation last March. So after March, I had like a month of vacation during April. So I went home to Zamboanga del Norte. I celebrated my graduation there with my family. And my dad came home after eight years. I only saw him when I was in first year high school because I studied first year high school in Makati. He came back for my graduation because I graduated with honors. And then right after all those uh, quick vacation, I went to Davao after after getting all my documents, all my papers from the school to start my review for the board exam for teachers, licensure examination for teachers. So I reviewed in Davao for five months. While I was reviewing in Davao, I had to go to Manila twice because I couldn't be absent for more than a week in, in my review center because I was part of this special group for top board examinees and they didn't want me to miss a lot and then the Spanish embassy wouldn't let another person get my passport or my visa for me last year they were just allowed to authorize someone to get it for them which was really convenient because if that was applicable during my application I wouldn't have to spend a lot traveling to Manila just, just to get my passport yeah, but anyway, the things that you will be needing if you're gonna be applying through a partner university is but even if it's not a partner university, you will need a bank statement for the past six months, I think, or past one year. And they have like a minimum amount in your account. Diploma, you need to be at least in your last year in the university and then a medical certificate during that time i really wanted to quit already because a medical exam was five thousand in pesos it's like a hundred something in euro and for me that was really expensive i didn't want to ask more money from my sister from my mom so i was calling them like mom i'm just gonna give up because after all these expenses i'm not even sure if i'm gonna pass the visa application because the thing is that you'll have to do all these processes without the assurance that you will pass the interview without the assurance that you will get your visa signed because some of them were denied there was no assurance that your visa will be approved so yeah I went back to Cagayan de Oro by September and then we took the board examination on a Sunday. I took it with Mara again. The day after that was our flight. Yeah, it was on a Monday. Most of the people who was with the ministry that time are already in Madrid because we are supposed to start working on the 1st of October. But we had our board examination on the 29th of September and we couldn't move that. So I actually missed my first day of class, but I already emailed the volleyball coordinator in the school. It was the first ever international flight I had. Like I was, I was really a broke student in the Philippines. I didn't have a bank account. I was only relying on my sister's allowance, on my dad's allowance, and relying on my scholarship. Before coming here, my sister booked an Airbnb for me and for Mara for the first 10 days while we were looking for a flat and luckily my sister has a friend here who's working here and she helped me find a place and during the first two months of my stay in madrid i lived in that the one with the filipino family of course i paid rent and all that but i got to meet karen who is also a language assistant in the same school that i'm working she was also living in madrid at that time so that means if we have a class by nine we have to leave our home from like seven something because i was assigned in a really far place and yeah when i received my school assignment 
I was searching the place in the map like Madrid to this place. It was like an hour away or an hour and 30 because you have to commute by by bus or by metro to Plata Castilla and then Plata Castilla to Ciudad del Real, which is like an hour away. So when I received my assignment, I was in Davao that time I was reviewing. I really cried. I called my sister and I was crying like, I didn't want this assignment, but well, we couldn't do anything. But I was really happy because it's a very organized school. The bilingual coordinator is very smart. She's also a teacher in school. And our principal, our headmaster is the headmaster of all headmasters in Madrid. So yeah. When I met Karen, she's also tired of commuting an hour and a half to, to our school every day. So there was a posting about this duplex. It's, it's the basement of the house that they wanted to rent. So we took that opportunity. I was paying the same amount. I was paying 225 euros there and 225. So yeah, that's what happened. And this year, I'm still working in the same school, but I'm no longer living in Salvador Real since I'm I'm not living with my best friend and my best friend is assigned in Madrid. So we chose to settle in Colmenar Viejo because another another friend who's from the same university who's living with us is assigned in Tres Cantos. So it's like the middle for all of us. Not really the middle, but like it's closer for me and for Germ. But for my best friend Rudner, it's it's an hour travel. So he leaves home at six o'clock or seven ish because he starts at nine. Yeah. When I first came here, I didn't speak any Spanish. Well, I you know how to say hola, adios, buenos días, buenas tardes, like those stuff. And I didn't get to learn any Spanish because in my first two months, I lived with a Filipino family. In the rest of the school year, I lived with Karen. And Karen speaks British English and I started learning Spanish during summer when I worked as an au pair because I didn't have a place to stay or contract was only until June and I didn't want to pay rent so I just worked as an au pair. I initially wanted to apply for summer camps but they were all closed because of COVID. So yeah, this is what happened during my first year. When I came here, everything just came to place. Everything was just, yeah. It was harder when I was in the Philippines because I wasn't sure of everything. I wasn't sure if I was gonna get my visa accepted. It was a very stressful process for me coming here, but when I was already here, it was like <sighs> everything was worth it. All those hardships, all the waiting game, because after you pass those two interviews, you're still not sure if you're gonna get a placement to Madrid. We got our placement between July, August. February, March, April, May, June, July, August, and that was like six months. And then after that, I processed my visa application. So it was a very stressful period. When coming here, we didn't really have any problems because everyone was friendly. We stayed in an Airbnb. It was like a shared apartment with a kitchen. So we just bought some food, rice, of course. At that time, we couldn't last a day without rice. Because in the Philippines, we eat rice for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner, but here they eat rice like twice a week. So when we first arrived, we dined at this Turkish place. We first went to KFC thinking that KFC would have a rice meal, but they didn't have it. We were really starving that time. They don't even have gravy. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, so we just dined in a Turkish restaurant right in front of our Airbnb. We had lunch there and they only gave us like a fork and knife. And I didn't really know how to eat using just those because in the Philippines, we use spoon and fork. So we had to ask the waiter for, for a spoon because that's how we eat. After we got here, we, we bought a Spanish SIM card. So everything just went to place. It was all easy. So yeah, that's what it's about. If you want to apply for the program, you can ask me questions. But in some other video that I might be making in the future, we will be talking about other ways to apply the program and the step-by-step -step application with the ministry. A word of advice for those who are currently processing their application with the ministry, don't give up midway. It's going to be all worth it in the end. So yeah, just keep pushing. I know that it's going to be hard and it's really going to be stressful with all the misery requirements and everything, but just keep pushing. You will get there. Yeah, and after that, it will be worth it. Totally worth it. Yeah. 
If you guys enjoyed this video or if you want to know more about what's life like here in Spain or if you just want to know about me in general, please click on that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in my next videos. Adios!